Shalom Chabrim, I'm Stephen Vernon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We do have a very interesting story this evening here that I wanted to share uh, with you guys. And before I get started here in sharing this, I want to share some of the things here that uh, uh, John Kirby from the U.S. State Department had to say about Russia with this latest tension that's been going on. Now, before I bring this up, let me, let me bring it up to date where we are and why John Kirby is threatening Russia in this latest event. Uh, event. And also, before I get into that, let me state uh, too for you guys here, we realize within two days, the United Nations will be taking over the internet. And so therefore, we may see a lot of channels disappear, especially channels like ours here on Israeli News Live. So we're wanting you to know in this broadcast here, exactly what we're trying to do to come up with alternative means to be able to stay in contact with you. We do have a channel, it's not news, it is strictly our teaching channel, just started on YouTube, called Dinoon Institute. This is where we will be doing teachings from. We've also created a, a uh, another channel uh, that's kind of like Facebook. Uh, uh, there was, a, I believe, a sister sent me today. Let me know about this new type thing, and I forget the name of what it's called, but I'll have a link in here. It's like Facebook, another, uh, you know, uh, social media place there that we've also created called Dinoon Institute. Um, and again, IsraelReturns.com was originally based on Danun Institute, and that's what we run. Now, we do run, uh, as we are right now, running live this broadcast, Israeli News Live on, fa on excuse me, on live stream, or Israeli News Live there. But we also have Vimo, and Vimo will be loading news broadcast on Vimo. What we would normally load here on Israeli News Live will be loading on Vimo, but it's under my actual name, Stephen Ben-Noon. Now, Dinun, remember, I know sometimes it gets a little confusing, Dinun and Binun. Binun is the Hebrew version of my name, and Dinun is the French version, which my father uses. Uh, I actually have the Hebrew version as well as my daughter. She as well was given at birth the Binun name as well. But anyway, at Vimo, Stephen Binun, all the links I'm going to place on YouTube here in the, uh, the subject box below. Get in there, subscribe, as well as our Twitter page. Right here is our Twitter page here. Uh, we are uh, here on Twitter, and it should be, let me see here, just quickly, look at here, Israeli News Live, at Stephen Dinoon. Okay, that's what it is. There's a lot of different Twitter ones that we have out there, but I'm just concerned that things are going to change rapidly here, and probably not in our favor. So we're giving you guys some alternative ways, as well, in worst case scenario, we're going to also, we have many of your contacts, those of you that have always contributed to the ministry, and if you don't have the means to contribute, if worst case comes to worse, e or excuse me, not email us, but send us a letter at P.O. Box 46 here in the Czech Republic. Our address appears at the end of the broadcast anyway. Send us a letter. Let us know that you would like to get our newsletter. We're going to actually create a newsletter, and as well, if we're shut down on all the internet, we will begin to take and do broadcasts that we send out by DVD around the world. So we're looking at different ways to be able to stay in touch with you in a worst case scenario. And it doesn't matter if you support this ministry financially or not, we'll do our dead level best to do it. I know that way would become extremely costly to do it, but we will try to do everything we can to keep you guys informed, as well as ham radio. We had Brother Holbrook who owns uh, the Antenna Farm. If you look up the Antenna Farm, I don't know if it's .com or whatever, Brother Holbrook, he donated to us a brand new ham radio system there. We're going to get the license, get up and running there to where we can uh, go globally via ham radio as well. We're just concerned, guys, a lot of things may change. So we are doing all we can, and we want to get the word out now. Check us out everywhere you possibly can. We will also be creating a website for Dinner Institute separate from that from Israel Returns. So we'll keep you up to date on that. We are looking for an internet guru that we that, that is really incredibly, impeccably good that we can hire to help us work on some of these issues, especially as the changes take place. Anyway, let's get right into the news here. I want you to listen to John Kirby here and some of the things that John Kirby has to say here as he threatens Russia. Uh, let's hear what he has to say. We'll continue to <clears throat> exploit uh, the, the vacuums that are there in Syria to expand their operations. They're going to exploit uh, it. will include, no, no question, uh, attacks against uh, Russian interests, perhaps even Russian cities. 
Um, and uh, Russia will continue to send troops home uh, in body bags. Russia will send body troops body home in body bags. God, I mean, there, I have never seen a more direct threat um, to the Russian Federation than what I've seen now. But let me tell you why the threat is there. What happened? The United States, although they have claimed, and I love my country, but I do not like the Obama administration. Clearly, this is a regime that is bent on bringing the United States down, and, and, and they do not have any regard for the human life whatsoever. To put Americans at risk, whether it be Barack Obama or even Hillary Clinton, they're putting the American people's lives at risk when we could easily have peace with Russia. What is it about Syria that the United States wants so bad to destroy everybody else in order to get it? And yet the, the Obama administration, as well as the British, they claim, oh, it was an accident that we bombed the Syrian troops. Yes, yeah, so we killed 62 Syrian military there. We did, not only did we kill 62 of their troops there, but it also killed Russian and... Iranian uh, special forces as well. That's why he said we will continue to send Russians home in body bags. Now, if if you notice what Ash, uh, what uh, excuse me, what uh, uh, Mr. Kirby here had to say, notice it again. Listen to him. Let's listen to that again. And, and Russia will continue to send troops home uh, in body bags. Russia will continue to send troops home in body bags. Now, he's admitting now outright that they know they killed Russian troops in the strike that they did there on the uh, Syrian army over there in, uh, in, um, on the east side of, of Syria. Always that name slips my mind. I can't because it's an odd name for me anyway. It's not like Aleppo or, or Damascus or something like that. Uh, Bela El, El Zord, I believe is how you pronounce the name there. But anyway, they're going to send them home in body bags, continued. Notice the word continued. So therefore, he knows he killed them. But Russia didn't take it lying down either. Russia took and struck the intel center where there were Mossad, Israeli Mossad agents. There were Saudis, Turkish, United States, and British forces were all involved in an intel inside of Aleppo who were directing the Syrian army forces. Now, according to some other news agencies as well, they are stating that the Syrian government, and I think this was on Sputnik, the Syrian government actually has the audio, intercepted audio between the intel group of uh, the U.S.-led coalition and that of the ISIS troops on the ground that they were preparing to do the attack, and they had them on standby as the U.S. went and struck the positions. Now, the Syrian army has this, so they know it was an intentional attack. And then what happens after that intentional attack by the United States and their, their coalition? Russia sends cruise missiles into Aleppo and hits the intel. This is why there's been a major blow-up. This is why they said there was such a major issue going on at the U.N. Security Council meeting when the United States calls for it. And, and the journalists are all saying something major must have happened in Syria before the US, for the U.S. to call for this. Sure it did. The, the U.S. can't admit to it because if the U.S. did, then the, the American people would know that the U.S. is backing sponsored terrorist organization ISIS once again. And not only the U.S., but the British, the Israeli, Mossad government, the whole group are backing this, and they're all working together, including the Turks, which lets Russia know that one, Israel is not 100% behind uh, or, or with Russia. So therefore, it puts my own Jewish people at odds as well with this type of, uh, of a situation to find out there were Mossad agents working in there with the United States. It lets me know that Prime Minister Netanyahu is caving into the pressure of the United States and doing whatever the Obama administration wants to do just because they got a little bit of money and shake the dollar in front of their face. That's a shame on Israel's part. That's why God is going to send two witnesses there to put this country back in order in order to get God's favor and for Israel to find God's favor. Because believe me, I am not for the political Zionism of Israel. I am for the Zionists, those Jews that have come home to see the Mashiach, to see the Messiah. Now, I can get on a big rant on this, guys, and never slow down at all. I hope you guys stay live on here as well on live stream. I see my battery is low. I couldn't find a wire quick enough to plug us in to keep us going. So let's pray God you do. And if not, catch it on YouTube, please. All right, Twitter, I want to show you what's going on right here. A good friend of mine here sends this to me here. Let me just show you 
This here is grad launchers, okay? Here they go. In, in Syria near Aleppo. All right, I think that gets the point across. Let me tell you what happens because if you'll notice, he says here to exploit uh, the, the vacuums that are. He says, we will continue to exploit the vacuums. The point was the United States is willing to arm the Syrian rebels, ISIS, the moderate groups. Hey, they don't care who it is. They're going to, the vacuums are the people like ISIS. They will exploit it. Well, they just did. They sent them all these grad launchers. The Free Syrian Army, the rebels, ISIS, none of these guys had these things before, but now they do. And what do we have here? Also comes out foreign state supplies Syrian rebels with new grad rockets FSA commanders. And that ones that were going off that you saw there on the screen, they were targeting the Syrian army with those grad launchers. So they have stepped it up a bit. Now see, the U.S. is still using the other forces there to do these attacks. How, how is Russia going to deal with this? It's going to come to the place now where Russia cannot hold back on hitting the moderate rebels that they had said they would not fight against for the sake of the United States. It's going to change. Foreign states have supplied Syrian rebels with surface-to-surface -surface grad rockets in response to the Russian back offensive in Aleppo, according to Fars al Bayush, rebel commander of the Free Syrian Army. Rockets for the Grad BM-21 multi-launcher system with ranges of 22 kilometers, 40 kilometers, have recently been supplied in excellent quantities, Reuters news agency reported on Wednesday. Guys, we're at war. This is, this is a major issue. We are definitely at war. Now, I want to show you, though, how that we know they have demonized Bashar al-Assad, and I'm beginning to see this more and more, guys. The, the Obama administration, this is the crookedest government the U.S. has ever had in its entire history. I mean, we've already got all the, the, uh, the different videos out there that the U.S. was behind the 9-11 attacks and which, you know, the families never want to believe this, and I can understand why. I can't believe that, the, you know, that our own government would be willing to, to kill off our own people to justify going to war with Iraq. But remember, that Gog, he cares nothing for life whatsoever. Let me show you something. This is Aaron Erdem. I never saw this video before. This is before he was ever arrested. This is when he was in court as an attorney trying ISIS freely moving about in the country of Turkey. Watch what Aaron says here. I'm going to have to read it to you. So let me turn the volume down so we can actually, uh, I can read it to you as he says these things here. He says, my friends, as you know, the indictment I be, I am not going to mention his name, was added to the file, okay? All right? Following the crimes. All right? He says, attempt to destroy the constitutional order, attempt to willful murder, affiliation to the terrorist organization, which means affiliation to ISIS. He's showing that Turkey has an affiliation with ISIS. Look, my friends, in these documents which are classified, it says that IB has smuggled 1,800 militants from Turkey to Syria since 2011. The man's holding the documents. He is showing you that this organization with inside of Turkey has smuggled in nearly 2,000 militants. Now this, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, was back in, when he said this was back in 2013. This was before the attack that was done on Syria with the sarin gas. Okay? Let's see what else. While he was smuggling them in groups of three and four, he was instructing them how to meet in front of the gas station to stay at a hotel. Now, this is just to show you that Turkey was involved in that. But Aaron Erdem, this man here, is now in a Turkish prison. He was a, a member of parliament of Turkey. But why did he end up in prison? Because he went forward with this documents in hand. He didn't reveal the documents, what it said, but he went forward to the RT and revealed to RT that in 2013, 
when the world accused Bashar al-Assad of gassing his own people that it was all a lie, that the same ISIS groups were smuggling in the chemical weapons, the Turkish authorities had intercepted them, they were arrested, but then they took the government, quickly changed the judge, not once, not twice, three times they changed judges to make sure that the guys would be let go with all the chemical weapons that they needed, the sarin gas. Aaron Erdem said that gas stuff, all the stuff to build these bombs came from Europe, and he said it couldn't have been done without the West knowledge, meaning the Obama administration. And he said the odd thing is, is at the very time that Bashar al-Assad was accused of using sarin gas on his own population, Aaron Erdem said well, that was the time that it was released. Within just a few days later, it was used upon the, on, the, on the civilian population. So yes, what is happening? The Obama administration is willing to make it look like it's Assad. And even what did we have when we just released on the news the other day? The peace organization from America, the delegation goes and visits Syria. They didn't just meet with the Syrian government. They met with the opposition as well and come back and know from what they have met and discovered that we're getting nothing but a big bunch of propaganda in America. That's why we had to create another channel for our teachings on at least. For those of you that want to know truth from at least from the prophecy side, because our type channel here, they don't want. But we will continue to do news on Vimo as well. Stephen Benoon at Vimo. All right, I don't know how that works. We'll post the links in here for you. All right, so this is, this is the smoking gun that Bashar al-Assad never used chemical weapons on his own people. It was backed by Turkey. The, it was all smuggled through there, and all, this, all, the, all the chemicals came from Europe, according to Aaron Erdem, and he has the documents in his hand and knows everything about it. And it wasn't just these documents of the smuggling. He had the documents of everything that happened with the sarin gas as well. All right, now let me show you another one here. Seymour Hirsch. He's a, a, a London journalist, and he writes here, says Hillary approved sending Libya sarin to Syrian rebels. That was another one that proved that it was the, that it come from the United States and behind it. They sent it to Libya, the sarin gas, and it was for the Syrian rebels. The great investigative journalist Seymour Hirsch in two previous articles in the London Review of Books, Who's Sarin? The red line and the rat line has reported that the Obama administration falsely blamed the government of Syria, Bashar al-Assad, for the sarin gas attack that Obama was trying to use as an excuse to invade Syria. And Hirsch pointed to a report from British intelligence saying that the sarin that was used didn't come from Assad's stockpile. Hirsch also said a secret agreement in 2012 was reached between Obama administration and the leaders of Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar to set up a sarin gas attack and blame it on Assad so that the U.S. could invade and overthrow Assad. And by the way, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and Turkey were part of the intel group when Russia struck them with the cruise missiles that died in that attack. You don't think that they're not there to throw, overthrow this man? Why are, they, why are they trying to overthrow him? What did Assad do? He never gassed his people. And all these chemical weapons now and this phosphoric that's being used, they're blaming on Bashar al-Assad and Russia again that they're using incendiary devices and sending all over America all these burned children and it's not, it's not Russia and it's not the Syrian government. We're being lied to. That's what's happened. We're being lied to. U.S. admits to supplying Saudi Arabia with white phosphorus munitions. Well, look what white phosphorus munitions does. And the U.S. government admitted to it. The U.S. has faced growing pressure in recent months over arms sales to Saudi Arabia as their airstrikes in Yemen have caused massive numbers of civilian casualties. September the 20th, 2016 is when this was published. And new evidence that Saudi Arabia has begun to use white phosphorus munitions in their war in Yemen. U.S. officials are admitting that the weapons were provided by the United States in the past. They declined to say when or how many weapons were provided. By the way, you don't have to use an airplane to drop this either. It can be, it can be done from ground launching uh, type of apparatus. So we have that. We also have Turkey hit Kurdish city with in internationally banned phosphorus bombs. That was May 18th, 2016. The Turkish government using phosphorus on the Kurds. Well, you know, don't forget the US, they only back the Kurds if it fits their agenda. The Turkish Army Forces have reportedly used internationally banned phosphorus bombs in a military campaign on the Kurdish city of uh, Nusa, Nusa, Nusayabin, southeast of Turkey. Activists and eyewitnesses reported on Tuesday. This comes amid contentious military operations by the Turkish troops against the Kurdish city in Nusayabin that have not stopped since 14th of March. We're being lied to, guys. 
we are being lied to like never before. And if God doesn't do something to change this administration and not put in Hillary Clinton, it's going to spell disaster for America. And I know there's a lot of people that are concerned, but, you know, let me just read something to you from, from, the, from the Word of God. And by the way, I want to share something with you too. I got a very interesting email. Those of you that actually heard where I spoke recently about the dream that God gave me of the buffalo that... And I knew, I don't know why, but I knew in the dream that this buffalo is a young buffalo that attacks. I'm assuming the other animal was a buffalo. It could have been a bear, but the other animal was so massive and was so close to where I, we were sitting there along that fence line. I couldn't see the head of it. I couldn't see the tail of it. I couldn't see the feet. All I could see was a big brown side of it. And I assumed that that was a buffalo as well. But I don't know. Maybe it was a bear. But I knew that that big mammoth animal represented Russia. That I did know. But the field had all kinds of animals. It had cows. It had buffalo. And I knew there were other animals, but for some reason I, I, I saw specifically the, the cows and the buffalo. And I remember this young buffalo. He had, he had a, a few other buffalo around him, and they were mischievous, and they were up to something. And they attacked that mammoth animal. And when they did, even there were people walking in the field, and then suddenly that animal lets out a cry and a stampede occurs, and suddenly everything's gone but all the people died in that field, and I knew it. Then someone sends me a, an email, and they said, Brother Steve, did you know that Obama was approving? We, you know, we have the southern bald eagle as our national animal, but as a national mammal, it is, lay, it is now at his desk that the buffalo be the national mammal for the United States. I had no idea. Tell me God isn't doing something. I see we lost our live stream feed there because the phone just died. I apologize for those on live stream. Anyway, we're getting close to the end, so you, I'm sure you guys will jump over to YouTube and catch it there. Uh, I wanted to turn real quick to Ezekiel 38, and hopefully I can find this very rapidly uh, for you and what he says here. See, we have Gog and Magog, Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth all thine army and horses and horsemen, all them clothed with all sorts of armor. That's how I know it has nothing to do with Russia. All sorts of armor. NATO is a multinational force. Even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them, handling swords, Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, and with them all them that, with the shield and helmet, Gomer, and all his bands in the house of Togomar, and the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou at, at a guard unto them, and, and many days thou shalt be visited. In the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is bought, brought back from the sword and has gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but is brought forth out of the nation, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm, thou shalt be like a cloud, cover the land, and thou shalt, and all thy bands and many people with thee. And thus saith the Lord God, it shall uh, also come to pass, that the same time shall things come into thy mind, that thou shalt think an evil thought. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages, and I will go to them that are at rest, and they that dwell safely of them dwelling with, without walls, and having neither bars nor gates, to take a spoil, and to take a prey, and to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that, that are now inhabited. Now see, notice, he comes into the Middle East, around the mountains of Israel, but yet you have to wait till the evil thought comes in his mind to turn around and come against Israel. That's because he wants what? He needs money. Who's the most indebted nation in the world? It's the United States at $19.5 trillion. They're the ones that need the money. It's not Russia. All right? Sheba and Dedan and merchants. All right? We go on down and seeing all this. Gosh, friends, it's, it's, it's terrible. There's another scripture that speaks about that they have no regard to life. When the Obama administration is willing to make sure phosphorus gets in the hands and, and sarin gas and they're willing to allow the attacks to happen to the Syrian civilian population 
in order to get public opinion behind them in the United States, that is about as wicked and evil as they come. And that's what's happening. I'm Steve.